Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to be here today and I think uh, what I'm going to talk about pretty much sums everything up. <laughs> Um, but the city I want to live in. Um, so I'm going to talk about how Reykjavik um, has been working towards well-being in the last years. Um, but uh, in 2020, um, we had our, uh, this is what we call our Green Deal. And this works kind of as our compass in our work in Reykjavik. Um, this is our strategic plan, and uh, it's leading Reykjavik's 13,000 employees towards a future vision of a healthier, greener, more equal society that, that offers quality services and a vibrant economy uh, without wasting natural resources. These are pretty high goals. Um, but uh, the ultimate goal, of course, is to enhance the quality of all of our residents. Um, so, the Reykjavik Green Deal um, is based on the three pillars of sustainability. Uh, it's the economic, social and environmental. And this then works kind of as our master plan towards sustainability. And therefore the well-being of all. Um, so, we have these three dimensions in the Green Plan. We have the green city, and then we have the growing city, and we have the city for people. In the green city, we have, for example, reduction in greenhouses, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we have eco-friendly transportations. In the growing city, we have, for example, responsible financial management. We have a good environment for the economy and innovation. And for this, in the city for people, which I will be focusing on, we have uh, improved public health. Uh, we have cultural arts combined with city life. Uh, we have the education, uh, which is under the let's make dreams come true. And uh, the city for people is for all of us. Um, so, these are all goals for Reykjavik's city, uh, the city for people. Uh, where Reykjavik is founded on justice, justice, fairness, and the participation of children and adults. Where residents can live in safety and can have a positive impact on their own lives and the lives of others. By listening to and sharing with one another, we contrib contribute to an equal community open to all. So these are pretty uh, high goals, and, but this is our vision. But how do you know if we are on the right track? We know where we want to go, but what are ways to measure if we're going in the right way? So I think uh, we have talked about uh, today and yesterday about how we in Iceland are data driven. Um, we are collecting the data and uh, these are, uh, for example, uh, we are um, uh, collecting this data. Uh, the measure of success in the Green Deal, um, the Reykjavik City implements three standards from the World Council on City Data. And these are the, uh, these are the standards. And uh, this week, uh, the data service for Reykjavik uh, is opening a data portal to ensure that all data appears uh, there with the aim of maximizing utilization and increasing transparency. Uh, among other data, uh, the city's sustainability indicators in relation to the green pl plan will be published there. Well, this is work that is, uh, we are implementing uh, these standards, but we are still working on it, how we're going to use it, how we're going to use these, this data to improve and read how we are doing. So, uh, but we want <laughs> for uh, our practitioners, our staff, and everyone to use the data. So we are trying to make, make it possible to have, so that everyone can have access to it. And I think that's our goal as a municipality, to, uh, so everyone can see what we're doing and what we're aiming at. Um, so the public health policy is one aspect of the Green Plan. Um, I think, but it's a very important one in relation to what uh, 
priorities are being discussed at this forum. Um, it was an important step uh, towards the well-being when the policy was adopted. Um, and the strategy is across the city sectors and uh, is intended to cover the main influencing factor of health and well-being. So these are the principal aims and priorities uh, on the social health fa factors. And uh, I'd like to mention that uh, the public health policy was uh, we were working very closely with our colleagues, with the Director of Health, uh, with the help of uh, Dora and Gia. And so um, uh, we have these three uh, principal aims, and then we have the three sub goals under each one. So we have the improved health and well being for at all stages of life, where we have a health promoting city, a model city, and risk prevention. We have the urban development for human health and the planet. Then we have the equality for health and well-being where no one is left behind. Uh, there we focus on uh, equality, the participation of all, uh, and secure and peace. And health and well-being is a guide to all, in all of uh, the activities of the city of Reykjavik. Um, that means, for example, a cooperation with the Directorate of Health with, for a health-promoting city, that means our cooperation in the Healthy Cities Network, uh, Shearing was telling us about earlier. Um, and that means also that the public health measure is based on data and regular measurements. And last but not least, uh, the sustainable well being economy. So, um, um, so the Reykjavik, uh, like I said, uh, is both. Uh, has been like in a close uh, cooperation with the Directorate of Health and we have uh, gained a lot from uh, being a, a member in the uh, uh, health promoting community since 2013 uh, and also uh, Reykjavik has been a part of the Who Healthy Cities Network since 2019 and in my opinion it's, gin, it's given us uh, an opportunity to bring the well-being and health into more sectors in the city. Uh, the public health in Reykjavik has focused on health promotion and prevention, um, but I think uh, we are taking more steps towards bringing our public health policy really into more sectors, and uh, we are feeling that um, both uh, 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 people in, within the city and, uh, uh, like, internally and, and externally, uh, people are, uh, I think, uh, starting to realize how much uh, importance the public health is in all our actions. So, and, and also I'd like to mention, to, to uh, being a part of us, like a networks like these, uh, it gives us an opportunity to measure ourselves with other cities, with other municipalities, and have the discussion uh, that is very um, fostering to the, the work we are doing. So, with the public health policy, um, uh, we, we presented the public health policy at a time marked by the COVID-19 pandemic. So we know uh, how that has affected uh, the, our environment. We know how that's affected uh, our residents for the short term, but the long term effects are still very unclear. But I think we are now uh, we are renewing it for the first time, uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, and I, I can say, like, and from the discussions uh, just here, uh, our focus will be on the well-being of all and uh, on the mental health and social factors. So, um, annually, we publish uh, the city health profile or the public health indicators for the city. So this is just an example of, uh, it's in Icelandic, so, uh, but this is an example. But, but in, the, in the city health profile, we focus on lifestyle, children and youth, environment, infrastructure, equality, and healthy aging. Uh, and I'd like to mention, we are also part of a healthy aging uh, communities. So, um, but uh, this, for example, uh, we have children and youth. And then we pick out uh, special indicators that we are measuring the well-being, health and lifestyles of our youth. And we are see, tracking uh, what we uh, experience to be uh, the most challenging uh, f factors in their lives at the moment. So they can, uh, it's variable between years what we are measuring, but 
I think this is very important both for, the, for uh, the, uh, everyone to see and also for the people who are working uh, close with in the communities. Um, so, in, in Reykjavik, we, we, and I hopefully I'll get the chance to talk about that a little bit more uh, later, but uh, we work in a team. We work, uh, I'm located, located at the mayor's office, but of course uh, we have so many people working in the service centers who are doing most of the job. <laughs> they are working closest to the people, and, uh, and I think with, when we put out a policy, sometimes in the municipalities, we get no funding. We get no money with it. You just say, they say, you should do this. We are going to aim for this, but you might not have any money to do it. So, um, but I think I want to make an example that little can do much. Because uh, we had this uh, public health fund, uh, a, a, an experiment project uh, that we are running through the service centers. Uh, the amount is based on the population under each uh, center. And it gives us an opportunity to talk about our public health policy, our well-being of the residents. We have a discussion with the stakeholders, the school, the leisure, um, uh, sports clubs, uh, everyone basically <laughs> who has something to do within the community. And um, so, like in this, uh, for yeah, so they are, uh, we are uh, uh, funding like small projects that are aimed to uh, aimed for the well-being of the resident in each district. Uh, and this, for example, is a picture from Kalarnes, which which is a suburb in Reykjavik. And uh, here we see a group of elderly um, taking part in a. a, a a structured physical activity. Uh, when uh, this, uh, when we started, uh, there was nothing for like uh, there was no option for them to take part in a structured, a structured uh, physical activity. Now we have uh, over 17% of old elderly people in Kalanes um, taking a part in these lessons. So we uh, were able to fund it, start it, and hopefully now. It's sustainable. Hopefully now they like people will come and see there's an opportunity for this and, and this will be sustainable. So this is just an example of how little can do much and I think it's very much in line with uh, what has been discussed here today to take the people into the conversation to make them realize what, what it's about and why we are talking about their welfare. And uh, last but not least, I would also in relation to that uh, so the project, like, they arise from conversation and the need in each city. So this is a, 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 an example of, of a youth conference that was held here in Harpa in, in, a, in a bigger <laughs> room because there were 600 of them. Uh, teenagers from ninth grade in the East District of Reykjavik, uh, they met here to, and spent the whole day to discuss their challenges. Uh, they had the police to come over. They were discussing like how, uh, what the police was doing for them, how they could approach uh, ch some challenges they're facing uh, in relation to violence and, and, and social media and so on. So I think um, this is like the future. I've talked about the future vision for Reykjavik, uh, but I think when, when it comes to all, it's really about the people and how we can uh, enable the grassroots uh, into the conversation towards the well-being. Thank you.